Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Santino's Sunday Cigar Review. I'm Mike. And I'm Mark, and uh, we're back this week, week three, to wrap up with Tatuaje Cigars. Uh, this week, Mike's getting ready to tell us what we're smoking. We're smoking the uh, 2013 La Spirit de Verite, the Robusto size Spirit of Truth. We'll keep it, keep it simple. Mike's getting ready to break these down. You guys stay tuned until the end. Find out how you can pick this cigar up free here at Santino's. All right, so this week we're going to be smoking the Tatuaje, the Spirit de Verite 2013. I mean, Spirit of Truth. Uh, Mike's going to go ahead and break this down. This is another one of those fun, rare releases, uh, limited things that Pete likes to do. Mike, why don't you tell us what we got here? Yeah, it's pretty simple this week. It's it's a, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. Um, it, it was introduced, uh, released two different ways. There were 10, bo- they're, they're like little co- wooden coffins, and they're boxes of 10. And there were 2,230 of those, and then they released a, a different version of 25 cigars, and there were 24,400. But uh, basically, it's just a, a Nicaraguan Puro, one of one of Pete's little specialties here. Yeah, coming right out of that, my father's cigars, where you know we know a lot of his fun stuff comes from. So, we're uh, let's sit down, get these things lit up, and we'll we'll get to talking. All right. We've lit in and we smoked a little bit of this, the Pete Johnson's Tatuai this, this, so far this week. Um, the Verite, the Spirit of Truth, and the Robusto were about a little inch, a little over an inch in. And we've, we've had a good little conversation about this so far. Mike, what are you feeling so far with this cigar? Well, first of all, I did a straight cut today. Sometimes I, I do a, a V cut, but today I decided to do a straight cut. I, uh, the first initial reaction when I started to smoke this, um, it gave a really nice white, I call it white silky smoke. It's a really white thick plume. It was nice, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it. It was a little on the spicier side at the beginning, smoking those ends of the tobacco at first. But as we've gotten into it, it's settled down. Um, it's a, it's a, a full bodied cigar. Um, but for me, it's just, it's just, it, 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 it kind of hits you as full bodied. There's there's not a lot of subtleties of, of different flavors and tones and spices. I, this cigar is just pretty simply for me a full bodied smoke. Right. And um, it's 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 really mellowed out, and it, it you can taste the nicotine. So for people who really enjoy maybe a maybe a high nicotine pack cigar, this works for me. Right. Real full strength cigar. Yeah. Right. Um, Simple and straightforward. <laughs> Right, so the cool thing about this, and kind of, you know, I'm going to dive into what I what I think too, or some somewhat on the same page. But these boxes that that Pete has these in actually kind of break down the the varietal seed proportion that's used from the crop. So we got a 55% 98 Criollo, 23% Habano, and a 22% 99 Corojo. So that's the that's the breakdown of all the the leaf makeup inside the cigar itself. So that that kind of plays into that that silkiness that you talked about. The smoke, the cigar did produce a really nice, w- without really even trying, kind of holding the smoke to let it out easily. It had a really nice silky white smoke. Um, I'm very fond of this cigar. It's a very full. It's a full strength cigar. That's the, I'm gonna agree with you completely. It's just a full cigar. It's a strong cigar. There's not a lot of complexity to the body. There's not a lot of flavor to it. Um, it started out with that, you, you picked up that traditional Corojo Criollo side where you have that, that spicy kind of nat peanut, that dry, the dryness, it was there. Um, when the smoke came in, the smoke did come in cool. The smoke wasn't hot. So that was, that, that's actually real neat. That's um, true. But now that you know, we're into it almost about halfway through, all the spice kind of comes through on the retro hail. And it just has this beautiful <laughs> kind of uh, almond silk, almond milk finish that sits on the back of your palate. Yeah, it leaves that it leaves that spice you're talking about, that almond 
peanut spice in the back of your throat, back of your mouth, and it lingers all throughout the smoke. But it, it sights, and you know, it's well constructed, you know, uh, typical of, of uh, Pete Johnson cigars. I mean, look, I guess I'm not, I'm not trying to keep a long ash or anything. This is just a way that it's burning. Yeah, there's so it's it's very very nice. There's no argument that it's that it's it's you know very well built. Um, you know we're not pairing anything physically today. Um, just not in the drinking mood, <laughs> you know. But when we smoked these and we got into them, we got to talking about what a good pairing would be if if you're in the the spirit side. So we we settled down on on a single malt. We have we have here the Ardbeg. It's a single malt. This Corvecan? is actually the Cor Corv Corvecan, Corvecan finish. I think. Yeah. Um, reason being, this is not the only Scotch, but a very peaty Scotch is going to go amazing with the cigar, simply because of the way the, the 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 flavors you pick up separate on your palate, and how there's not really a huge complexity to the body when the flavor comes through. The thick peatiness of the scotch will actually kind of sort of reset and tone down your palate and maybe help open things up as it comes through it just i think i think with that pairing it's going to be the best option you have to really exploit whatever's going on in that back end to maybe expand on that almond side of things one last quick question uh the price point for this cigar mark so the national msrp on the cigar is around 16 to 7 16 to 19 dollars here at Santino's, we sell them at eighteen a stick. Okay. okay, they come in the you know they come in the ten count boxes. So um, it, it's we get to try buying and I kind of bring that in a it, little bit. It was a, a, a special release back then, right? Yes. No longer is it available? Um, they they come out every so often. So the two thousand the two thousand thirteen crop is not the first release. So you had a two thousand and ten crop that never actually hit the market was sent to a select couple of reviewers that actually got to review about it and talk about it. Then there was the 2012 and the 14. And in 14, um, or I'm sorry. We're smoking 13. We're smoking the 2013 crop. Crop, okay. So, oh, I have that backwards, I apologize. Not 14, 2012, it was announced when, the, when Pete released it that it was going to be back the next year. Well, a couple years went by, the cigar never came, then out came the 2013 crop. So, um, from everything I've read, everything I've looked into, it may come back again, but you know, Pete does his things select. He doesn't do anything until he finds the blend he wants and it goes out. So, we'll, uh, let's get into these a little more, kind of get down to these labels a little bit, and then let's break down our tribe buyer than I. Sounds good. All right, folks, we're at that much anticipated tribe buyer deny portion of our show. Uh, Mark, I guess I'll, I'll go first. Yeah, change uh, it up. You know, this is definitely a try and a buy for me, but I'm, I'm gonna give you uh, my, my reasons why. Being that it's a, 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 I call it a simple full-bodied cigar, if this cigar for me would be great after a nice elegant meal, a nice steak, a nice a Chilean sea bass, something something uh, very nice, this, this, this cigar at the end of that meal will bring out even more of the qualities of that meal I had. And this would not be a cigar that I would typically smoke during the day or especially now in the morning hours. <laughs> uh, but like I said, this is a cigar reserved for enjoying your capping off a nice exquisite meal. Right. Mark, how about you? Um, this is a, a buy for me and, and a try for others. I'm going to give you my reasons too. Um, with this, the cigar for me, I'm a, I'm a very full strength cigar smoker. I like cigars with a lot of nicotine, and I typically like cigars that have a lot of flavor to them as well. The beautiful thing about this cigar is if you're just looking for a strong cigar that you can smoke, you're not worried about whether you're having coffee, water, orange juice, lemon, it, it doesn't matter what you're drinking with it, the cigar is perfect. It's going to give you everything you want in the strength little bit of body differential you know as we smoked in a little little more i was telling mike i got like a peanut butter on a rich cracker flavor thing going on right now so either i'm broken or <laughs> this thing's real creative um but i agree with mike this this is typically kind of a cigar that after a big meal when you've you've had you know you've had a great steak or you've had some great seafood and, you know you've had some wine at dinner then you're settling down for a cocktail and a cigar sometimes it's just better to give yourself a cigar that's got the strength you want 
versus the complexity and flavor because your palate's already all over the place from the meal you just had now you're sitting down you're kicking back the, the cigar's perfect for that environment it, I, it's an I, absolute beautiful finish to i'd like eye. to add one more thing and i want to ask the audience this you know i've never been a cigarette smoker but i think as 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 cigar retailers, when, when, when we're transitioning someone from cigarettes to cigars, we always want to tend to put them in a mild cigar to start since they've never smoked. But kind of throwing this out to the audience is, since I've never smoked a cigarette, people smoke cigarettes, they enjoy that nicotine. And because this is so full bodied and packed with nicotine, I wonder if this is a great choice for a person trying to transition from cigarettes to a cigar because they've already enjoyed that nicotine punch. Right. Um, so I'm interested to get some feedback from, from, from the audience here yeah, it's, this week. It's worth a grab, let's see what we can come up with, but uh, definitely a buy and, and a try, guys. If you, can, if you see this thing laying around your local tobacconist when you go in, pick one up, try it. I will advise you, if you're not a full strength smoker, please eat. Eat something before you smoke it or you will run into that that head rush issue, you know, all the fun that comes with. And you know. guys, it's simple. If you ever have that happen, just eat a piece of chocolate. That'll yeah. go away almost instantaneously. Perfect. All right, guys, ding our little bell and go down there and like and comment on the video. The comment that receives the most likes will win this cigar we are smoking for free. As long as you're 18 years or older, resident of Missouri, come into the shop, pick up your cigar, and we're going to give you the opportunity to sit down right here on the show with us. Before we wrap up today, our next three-part series, we've decided we're gonna bring in, we're gonna talk Karen Berger from Don Kiki Cigars. Um, we're gonna talk about the K, her special line. We'll get into a lot of that you know, next week once we get going, but uh, that's, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Thank everyone, and this is Mike signing off. And I'm Mark. And remember, we smoke, we drink, and we know plenty of things. Cheers.